Hello and welcome everyone. Last week we did an introduction leading up to the series. Today's um, groundwork foundation from which to build on. Today we're going to go through the first eight verses of Psalm 119 which the section is the first Hebrew letter Aleph one individual in an article I found summed up this section as the blessings of and the longing for obedience to the divine law and after digging into it going through the verses and preparing for this I would agree that that is a fair um, a fair summary of this section there's definitely a blessing and an obedience if nothing more than eternal life for Jesus Christ an eternity with our Savior cannot be compared to anything else it far supersedes not only must we desire obedience to his word, but we should long for his word. His word, our Bibles, are a cup of cool water when we are thirsty in the desert. His word is the warm sun that drives away the bitter cold of our lives. His word is powerful and it's ours to search out by doing so we get to know him and more intimately we can have a deeper relationship with him as we seek him daily in both prayer and through his word With that said, let us look now to the verses that comprise this first section of Psalm chapter 119. Verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. The psalmist begins this first verse. Psalm 119 uh, the same with the same word that we find in Psalm chapter uh, 1 verse 1 with the word blessed we also find this word blessed in the Beatitudes of Jesus in Matthew chapter 5 the psalmist writes that the individual who is remains undefiled on the path they walk is blessed or happy this path is twofold one they walk with God and two they walk in the law of the Lord or according to his word Breaking this down further, undefiled does not mean that the individual is sinless or perfect. We all fall short and we need to daily seek God in repentance. The undefiled is better described as refusing to frequent uh, bars and get drunk or refusing to dabble in sexual promiscuity or refusing to lie cheat steal and other behaviors and attitudes that are not conducive to right living remaining undefiled means that best of our ability 
and in his strength we strive to live according to his commandments and we stay away from the things that God prohibits. Uh, moving onward, we find that the word law is used. Going back to the eight descriptions that we had in the introduction, if you didn't take a note or if you want to look back, we see that the choice of wording here by the psalmist is important. The word law means direction. The psalmist purpose, purposely chose this word as a way to direct us on the right path. We are directed away from being defiled and towards undefilement to the word of God. So we come to the crossroads, so to speak. And the law is a signpost that said this is the way in where we walk. And the other way will leave us defiled, dabbling in sin, and messing up our lives. So we find the law here as a guidepost. To walk in the law of the Lord is to follow the guidepost of the law to keep us on the straight and narrow that will lead us to eternal life. While many argue that a night of drunkenness makes them feel good, it is only temporary. You wake up with a bad hangover, you feel horrible, the high is over. If you lie one time, it appears to be okay. However, you find yourself lying again and again until you're caught and your trust and reputation are ruined. And on and on we can list things that we think will fulfill us, but we cannot be happy or blessed in doing these things. When you follow the word of God, when you follow his ways, it is true that you may suffer, and you may have hardships, and there will be some rough seas to navigate. However, we are blessed, or we can be happy, because our reward is not here on earth. It is eternal, and it is not something that moth, rust, and thieves can take from us. To sum up this verse, and again, I'm always careful in handling the Word of God, but sometimes it helps to just provide maybe a little summary. And so, at the end of each of these verses, I kind of I'll try to do this going forward. Just a little summary or paraphrase version of it without taking away from it or want to make sure that you know the word is rightly divided but with that said the summary of this verse we are happy when we stay undefiled walking in the direction of God and his word Verse 2, blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. Again, psalmist begins this verse with the word blessed. Not only are they happy or blessed that are directed by his law in the way that is not defiled, but they are also happy and blessed when they keep his testimonies, God's testimonies, and they seek God with their whole heart. So, keep his testimonies means to be loyal to God and the covenant that he has made with us. It was a covenant in the Old Testament. We live under the new covenant 
after the crucifixion of Jesus and his blood shed for us and his grace applied to our lives. And this covenant is the promise of everlasting life that if we will repent of our sins, be baptized and let his Holy Spirit live inside of us, it's the Holy Ghost that is the free gift unto us, that he will keep a covenant with us we will live in that covenantal relationship. The word testimonies can also mean a witness. We bear witness to God. We are a living epistle known and read of all men. When others see that light, they inquire. And what a blessing it is to share the hope that we have in Jesus. Cross-referencing here to Jeremiah 29, 13, we find that it states, you'll find God when you seek him with your whole heart. Wholehearted devotion is giving every piece of your heart to God, not reserving any part for something else. It is complete sincerity and commitment. Heart, in this verse, is our inner man, our soul. Our inner being must be committed and consumed by God and his word. When we give over our commitment to God and to his word, this fuels the light inside of us and allows it to burn brighter for the world to see. Everything that is in us flows outward. Thus, it is our inner man that we must get right. We can put on a show externally while inwardly we are rotten in dead men's bones, as stated in the New Testament. But eventually all that will be exposed. We start with the inner man. We get our hearts right. We get our minds right. And we focus on God and we live in wholehearted devotion inwardly and then outwardly the change begins to take place. Summing up this verse, happy is the individual who bears witness to the word of God and that seeks him with his inner man in complete commitment. Verse 3, they also do no iniquity, they walk in his ways. They also do no iniquity. Who are they? The they refers to the previous two verses, verses 1 and 2. So the individuals who are undefiled, who choose to walk in the way of the word of God, who choose to keep his word and seek him with their whole heart. By doing those things, these four, those four things, those will be the key to staying away from iniquity. Iniquity in this verse is extreme injustice. It goes beyond just simple partiality and favoritism. I would say a good example would be seeing someone commit a heinous crime and then doing nothing, nothing about it. Excuse me. When we have God, when we have his word, we are pricked and convicted to do what is good, what is just, what is fair, and what is right. God and his word essentially become our conscience, our voice, guiding our motives, our thoughts, and our ways. This is the character of God is holy and against injustice. We take on that likeness. We do not want to have any part with injustice. So if we see it done, then we act, and rightfully so. The phrase, the way, is also in verse 1, and again here. It is the way of life. There are two ways in life. You can follow sin and evil. 
or you can follow God and eternal life. And you have a choice. God does not force anyone. If we choose God, we choose his word, and we walk on defiled, shunning injustice and other things that go against his word. In summary, the individuals who refuse defilement, who walk and keep his word, and see him completely with their inner man, will not take part in injustice, but will choose rather to walk in the path of God. Verse 4. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Precepts is defined as someone who oversees a matter. Here the psalmist writes and promises to be an overseer of God's precepts. Again, the wording choice is important. He essentially is an overseer of the matters that need to be overseen. While it seems redundant, you get the point that choice of wording here of the eight that we had listed he chose precepts because of the choice of wording thou is referring to god god has commanded us to keep his precepts he's commanded he's given us orders when god gives orders we obey and again, we don't have to. In fact, we get to know our God. It's not going to force anyone. But for those who choose to please him, those who truly love him, his commandments are not grievous. The word that he gives us, the obedience, it is not grievous for us to do so because we are in love with him. We obey because we know it is good. And everything that he ever asks us, uh, asks of us is beneficial. We are to keep the matters of instruction that God has given us. We are to be overseers. Look into matters. And see if they align with his instructions. His instructions are the word of God. Want to know if a matter is good or bad? Then we look to the word. The word diligently means with great degree or abundance this means to take everything into account there are some matters that are just straightforward then there are other matters that require us to take everything into account and to make a decision by searching the word of god they're not simple matters that are cut and dry well i don't necessarily believe that there are per se gray areas. I do believe that some matters are a little bit more difficult to require wisdom and the guidance of God and his word. The decision may not be sin to do one way or the other, but choosing the right way will keep us on the right path. And if we're not careful, and look into the matter appropriately we could choose the way that would lead to sin or a way that could cause us harm in summary god has given us orders to keep his instructions taking everything into account Verse 5, O oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. This is the first exclamatory statement. The psalmist is crying out. Apparently, from he's had difficulty walking in the ways that God has laid out for him. If only he were directed to do so, it would be so easier. 
However, if we are simply forced with no choice, then our decisions would lose sincerity. The psalmist is essentially wanting to walk according to the word of God, but is having difficulty. And he has such a passion and desire to do so that he is crying out to God for help. We'll see later on in more verses where he does essentially the same thing and even goes so far to abdicate his own free will because of the path of God and the path of his word and how important it is. Again, we see our ways, which are our moral actions, they need to be directed by God. So this requires a submission on our part. Again, he's not going to force us. We have to choose to let him help us. We have to let him be our strength and our guide as we walk this road called life. Our actions should be those things that keep his word. It should be in alignment. And while we're not perfect, we'll come up short. We get back up, we keep going. His word is a lamp that guides us along the way. And we'll see this later on in the series when we get to verse 105. A lot of references to light and a lamp and illumination of his word. The word statutes here are the authority that the word of God has. You know that the word of God is the mind of God, is the logos. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. John 1.1 1, 1. is part of him. There is one way that he speaks to us. It is divinely inspired or God breathed. Thus, his word has authority. It has the power to shape and transform our lives. It's no wonder that the psalmist wanted to be directed to keep his statutes. May we desire the same thing. May we be submissive in letting God help us do so. In summary, God, please help me and direct me to keep the authority of your word. Verse 6. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. When the psalmist truly, truly respects all the commandments of God, then will he not be ashamed. The psalmist is stating that he will not have to worry about embarrassment because of his actions. When we follow the word of God, we do not have to worry. We will embarrass ourselves or do something stupid. No, I'm not saying that we don't still do things. The point is, is that the word of God, the instructions that it gives us are not going to mislead us. The word of God is pure and life-giving. Everything in it is just. And it is a path for right living. We have no fear that we will act in a way that is troubling. If we respect and regard the commandments of God. The commandments are the straight authority. And the right to give orders. Essentially, when God gives orders, we'll obey. And we'll be doing what is honorable. If anyone does view us as foolish, we know that we are what we are doing is honorable unto God. When we have God, we have everything. 
and we do what he asks, it matters little what others think. The point here is to follow his word, follow the voice of God, respect God or regard him as the supreme authority of your life. And not be so concerned with others' opinions. God has the final say. And our allegiance and our lives need to be in alignment with him and his word. In summary, I will not have any cause for embarrassment when I regard the word of God and the orders that God gives me. Verse 7. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart, and I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. The psalmist declares to give praise or thanks unto God, with the inner man whose central focus is on God, and God alone. When does the psalmist decide to do this? When he has learned or educated himself in the Word of God. The Word of God instructs and teaches us the greatness of God. It teaches us his attributes. Through the Word of God, we understand his character. He's holy, he's faithful, he's just, etc. We learn of others' examples. We've endured and blessed by God. In the Word of God, we find wisdom and understanding. And all of this culminates and it rises up within us that are to the point that our heart is focused solely on God. We desire with the deepest longing to give thanks to Him. Here the word judgments is knowing what is right. It is the rules that we are regulated by. These rules about right living keep our heart centrally focused on God. And they're not burdensome rules. They're not restrictions per se. We desire to follow his rules because he loves us. A better way to look at this would be that his rules are a wall around a city. We are the city. His word surrounds us and keeps us safe from the attacks of the world and the adversary. Who wouldn't want to give thanks unto God who keeps us safe? In summary, my thanks will be unto God from a heart whose focus is on him alone. This focused heart and this thanks will come from learning the righteous word of God. Verse 8, our final verse for this lesson. I will keep thy statutes and forsake me not utterly. I will keep your statutes or your inscription upon my life. I will hide your precious word in my heart and hold it dear. I'm yours, God, and yours alone. Please don't leave me forever. For what good would this mark that says I belong to you be? Your authority is upon me. I am submissive to your will, O God. I will keep your word to the best of my ability. Please be my strength, my weakness, and forgive me when I fall short. Do not leave my side, because I need you. With all that is in us, work and live to keep the word of God. Pay it and honor it. God has promised never to leave us or forsake us. 
And though at times we could feel abandoned, he is still there. He loves us. The psalmist must have felt God had left or to utter these words. His reverence and fear of God brought him to a place to call out. I'm confident that God came and consoled him and assured him that he was still near and always with him. In summary, I will observe and I will heed your authority and the authority of your word. Please do not forever leave me, O oh God. I pray that this understanding of this first section has helped and it's been a blessing. I pray that I've handled, that I've honored and rightly divided the word of God. It's a blessing to be able to do these lessons, not one that I take lightly. I'm thankful for the gifts that God has given me, and that he's enabled me to do this task. Everything that I do is to honor him and to help others to grow stronger roots and become better in him. Next week, we will cover verses 9 through 16, which is the second Hebrew letter, Beth. Until that time, be blessed today and always. In Jesus' name.